We're going to open up some. Thing. Santiago Pombo's in the house. You're here in the Sports Lounge. And now, you're tuned into Tampa Bay's RBLR Sports. What's good, Tampa Bay? My name is Eureka Wheeler, and I'm with two of my best friends here, man, in Tampa Bay. Chris Glazier, the other host of the Sports Lounge. What's good, Chris? What's up, buddy? Watching uh, Mr. Savali make his debut for the Rays right now. It's a good time in Tampa Bay. I'm still in the same hat I was in Wednesday night that you might have seen on TV. It's a possibility. Uh, we made an appearance on uh, a little bit of a wrestling show, but... But Eureka, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, yeah, you may have seen us in uh, uh, live uh, on <laughs> TBS on Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, dead center hard cam. Uh, or maybe you saw us on the taped uh, TNT Rampage show because I was wearing a green and gold jersey to stick out, which is the same colors that our special guest is wearing. That, of course, is of the Tampa Bay Rowdies and a super fan of the Rowdies. Santiago Pombo, what's good, buddy? What's up, RBLR Nation? It's been a long time since I've been in front of you guys. It's awesome. Thank you, Eureka. You know, he reached out and we're like, of course, definitely would love to be on this week's show for sure. What's up, Chris? Yeah. How you doing? And uh, yeah, man, let's talk some sports, Tampa Bay sports here. Super excited. How yeah. about our rowdies here, the Bucks? Yep. You know, we can't wait. Yep. Yeah, man, we're going to get into all that because uh, what I really want to do is get to know, like, man, you, you've been a fan of Tampa Bay for a long time. Uh, I mean, we, we're all living in this Tampa Bay era uh, that, that we all went through. and But you, you've been around since before then. So, like, what? that's the first question I want to ask is, like, from someone who got to live the before times, there's a lot of people that are Tampa Bay sports fans that are just now coming to the party, and they expect – they expect number one position. They expect the Super Bowl. They expect the Stanley Cup, right? Um, what was it like to be a fan before all of that was going on? Well, I'm originally from New Jersey, you know what I mean? So when I when I grew up, I came down here to Tampa Bay in 1998. Okay. You know, that was the start of like, you know, hey, you know, the Bucks and still in the creamsicles. Still the old Sombrero was around. Tampa Stadium, and yeah. then they inaugurated, they opened up Raymond James, you know what I mean? So I was here back then. Um, you know, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, to be honest with you, when I came down here, started, I went to a bunch of games with them, you know, it was called the St. Petersburg Times Forum, and also the Tampa Bay Times Forum, so it was like, it was right after they came over from the trop, you know what I mean? Okay. But, um, you know, it was rough, man, because there would be more Fans from, let's say, like the Flyers, Rangers, Devils, you know, like even Florida Panthers. I mean, you know, it was just a different league back then. And, and we were sweet. It would be horrible. It would be very bad. Um, uh, you know, then obviously, you know, Tony Dungy came around, you know what I'm saying, with the, the famous Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense, Tampa 2, obviously having John Lynch, Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks around, you know. You know, we had Sean King back then as quarterback, and you know, it was uh, man, it was it was it was it, it was tough. It was tough, but I mean, yeah. All of a sudden, the switch the switch came around, like around 2004 when the Lightning won. You know, the Stanley Cup. Obviously, yeah. the Bucks in 2002 they won the Super what? Bowl. Yeah, that whole era, right? Like, for kind of being like laughing stocks of everything, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, expansion, expansion hockey. I mean, what do you expect, right? Uh, well, it's a little different nowadays, but uh, yeah. they didn't have the same rules to protect the. the, the they didn't. Pr they protected the the hell out of the existing teams back then. But you know that that first little era, that little two thousand to oh four, where you did have a Super Bowl and you did have a Stanley Cup in the you know not in the same time period, but um uh yeah what was that like when you, when we first got our first championships how did that feel well honestly i honestly believe you know here in this area you know when when the teams do good people stick stick behind the teams you know what i mean like they, it's it's exciting it's exciting i mean the whole area is all the bars restaurants you know everybody's wearing their jerseys and stuff like that you know get a hat, get a flag, get something, you know, even back in the day, it was like that as well. You know, I had a Brad, 
I had a medium size, which was kind of big on me now. You know, I just, I gave it to a good friend of mine, but I had a Brad Richards jersey from 2004. Yeah. I had a Nikolai Javi Bull and Bull and Wall jersey back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I just had to give it to a buddy of mine that he's a little bit taller than me, and I knew it was going to fit him. So I'm like, here you go, my friend. And he's a huge lightning fan. He's a season ticket holder, so he goes to the games all the time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, around that time, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. You know what I mean? Because obviously, man, seeing the Bucks win the Super Bowl. I was in high school when the Bucks won the Super Bowl, man. I was in East Lake High School here in Tarpon Springs. Yeah. You know, I live in Newport Ritchie, Florida now, just like 15 minutes north of where I went to went to high school. And uh, it was it was unbelievable. Joe Joe, Joe Juravicious, you know, like Mike Allstar, you know, like man, the, you know, it was it was crazy. It was unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? It really did. Obviously. I'm wearing a Rowdy's hat right here. You know what I'm saying? And it's like back in 2001, we had the ten, we had an old team that doesn't exist, of course, because they came after the Rowdies. Rowdies are come back from 1975, which I wasn't around. But we had a team called the Tampa Bay Mutiny. Yes. And it was they were part of Major League Soccer, yes. which is super well known right now. You know, you see Leo Messi and stuff like that. It's a little like different that, now, yeah. <laughs> it's a little different nowadays with everything, but – you know, I always heard about a team back in the day called the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Obviously, looked them up, fell in love with the team. When they came back in 2010, I jumped on board, you know, going to games. That First of all, I went to that first ever game down at George Steinbrenner Field right across the street from Ray J. Yeah. Raymond James Stadium. That's crazy. I went they to made that, that a soccer yeah. pitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, obviously then they moved down to Al Lang. Al Lang Stadium, and uh, I have something here from the 2012, you know, championship game. I actually got, I actually got, I actually got this jersey right here at the actual game. Um, like yeah. during halftime, I need, I wanted to get a jersey, and I go down to the store and I say to a lady, "Hey, do you guys have any soccer jerseys available?" Like like a medium size and she gave me the one that's also off the mannequin and then I wore it and then I wore it and that was that's the jersey right there it has a one star and yeah. stuff but yeah man but then I just kept going I just keep going you know what I mean and now I watch it on TV ESPN plus and stuff like that so um but yeah it's just it's so great nowadays to have the success the fans like you go to lightning games it's all lightning jerseys you go to Rowdy's games, it's all Rowdy's. It's, people are very, very proud. If you go to Bucks games now, you know, Bucks everywhere. Tom Brady, the GOAT, decided to come here and play for us, won our second Super Bowl. You know, it's just – and the Rays are unbelievable right now, hoping that we've seen so many teams win. And I want the Rays, and I want the Rays to become World Series champions this year because we're playing unbelievable baseball. They can do it. We can do it. Let's go Rays, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go Rays. Got the Rays over here <laughs> representing, you know props. what I'm saying? My man's got Got props. the props, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> representing. It's all in the veins, man. It's all in the all right. veins, brother. Get in there. Get in there, Chris. What you got? All right. So so, so with you being a, a, you know, a transplant, you know, obviously from, from New Jersey, right? We, we, mm -hmm. we have a lot of transplants here. We just, we just, yeah. do. we have, a, we have plenty exactly. of our own producer, our main man, Eureka here is a transplant himself. I'm so with that being said, you know, I see a lot of, you know, people are from New York that wear a Giants jersey when they play the Bucks. But mm -hmm. when the Bucks are, when the Bucks are playing any other team, you know, they're representing the Bucks, you know, mm -hmm. but when the Giants come to town, they're representing the Giants. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you came here, you know, when you moved here um, as a fan of, obviously you're probably a fan of New Jersey sports, uh, New York mm -hmm. sports up there. Mm -hmm. When you got here, was it our culture that, that made you want to, that grasped you into, man, I want to be a part of this Tampa culture or, you know, how does it work for a transplant like you? Because like I said, I see a lot of fans who are on the, you know, eh, I'm from here, but I root for this. Are you just straight Tampa or do you, are you split down the middle a little bit? To be honest with you, because listen, I, I lived up in New Jersey 14 years of my life. You know what I mean? Okay. My first 14 years up there. So honestly, my first ever, you know, the only really true New Jersey team that I have ever, that I ever supported up there in hockey were the Devils. You know what I mean? Like I really did. Because they wore the the New Jersey, their New Jersey is not New York Devils. You know what I'm saying? It's New Jersey <laughs> Devils, right? And then and I and, and when I lived up in New Jersey, you know what I mean? Like I only honestly ever went so because I was a, I was young. I was a I was a 
barely a teenager. You know, when I moved here in 98, when I was 14 years old, so I didn't drive. I didn't, you know, my parents had to take me some, if I go, you know, whatever. So I honestly, I oh, I only ever went to, I, my remembrance was one ever New Jersey Devils game. That was at the old Continental Airlines Arena in the Meadowlands. And it was honestly Dave Anderchuk, who was our captain during the okay. 2004 Stanley Cup. I went to his game where he scored his 500, 500th goal. Okay. And um, I was young. I mean, obviously, I don't remember much of it. I was too young. But I remember, like, you know, when I lived up in New Jersey, and uh, I would always print out, like, the schedule. And I would listen to games on the radio. Like, I would go to school on a school night. I would hear, because I I had to sleep early. You know, I had to get up early the next one. But I would hear the Devils games on the TV, because my parents told me, like, you have to go to sleep to get up for school the next morning. So pretty much that. Um, American football never got into the Giants or the Jets, to be honest with you. Um, you know, other than that, like, you know, baseball, you know, to be honest with you, I liked the Yankees when I was living up there. You know, obviously, like, we already know the history the Yankees have, right? But, you know, I've lived, honestly, and I always say this, I've lived in the Tampa Bay area now since 1998, living here 25 years. I only lived in New Jersey 14 years of my life. So I've spent more of my life here in this area than I did up there. You know, I went up to New York last year, you know what I'm saying? But I'm such a tourist up there, man. Like, I remember walking the streets of New York. I was using Google Maps. And a lady asked me, she's like, do you know where I can go to the subway? And I had my phone on Google Maps. She's like, oh, you're a tourist too, huh? You know what I mean? (laughs) I started laughing because I'm like, I am a tourist. I'm not from, I'm from there when I was young. And I did put my roots there, but my youth of like going out, you know, living my real life was in the Tampa Bay area and it's been here. And I've, and I've grown so much that I, and Tampa sports have taken over me, you know, more than the sports up there. Like I said before, I grew up with the Devils winning three Stanley Cups, you know, 95, 2000, 2003. And I was in 2003, I was down here. Even in 2000, I was down here. But like I did, I did see them. You know what I mean? But you know, it's not. And now the Lightning have three Stanley Cups. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's just I'm a I'm a I'm a Tampa Bay fan right now. You know, and it's uh, it's not gonna be. Was I'm not like gonna go gradual, back and forth. Was that a gradual thing, or was it like going to the games a lot? Like I, I think that's a good question that Chris brings up because mm-hmm. you know a lot of people they they adopt Tampa as like their other team. I know I yeah. did it. You know, mm-hmm. like coming from Colorado. But mm-hmm. then, like going to the games a lot and in, in, engaging yourself into the culture, you just—I don't know. It, it, how did that like happen to you? Was it like, you're you're here now? Okay, cool. I'm gonna be Tampa Bay now, or yeah. was it like you you kind of root for both teams? Like how did that how did that work? To be honest with you, I went to a Devils game. My mom loves hockey. My yeah. mom she she loves hockey. So I, my buddy, his name is Tyler Crane. What's up, Tyler? <laughs> Maybe you see this. I'm giving you a shout out. But he go. He's a season ticket holder for um for the Tampa Lightning. And uh, I remember it was like two, three years ago. He gave me um he gave me one of his tickets. It was for the Devils. And uh, you know, I went with my mom. My mom and we sat in the seats and we were seeing the game. The Devils scored first, and I'm like, and honestly, because it was just my childhood in me, I went like, yes, I did go yes, and I gave a high five to my mom. And the Devils were winning, was it like 2-0 or something like that? And then the Lightning just scored, 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 scored. I got up and I gave, I gave an applause. I did. Because it's just like, I have to accept, I'm still going to root for my childhood, and I'm not going to go against that, you know what I mean? But yeah. I live here now, and I, I want my teams here to be, I want them to be out. You know, it's just like, you know, like I want our history to grow more. Yeah. You know I mean, I want us to bring more Civil War here yeah. so we can get the best players here. You know, we can well, have the tradition of other cities yeah. that when you hear like huge stars now, you know, in, wh- in whichever sport, I want them to put Tampa Bay as a destination. I'll be like, I want to go to Tampa. I well, you, you, bring up, you bring up building history and things like that. And like, I, I think one one place that you can talk about is is Lang Stadium. I think that mm-hmm. that's an experience that is unique to this Tampa mm-hmm. Bay area. It's something that uh, a lot of people like when, when you go there, it's there is just something magical about it. And it mm-hmm. kind of it's like once you're there, 
you'll be a Rowdies fan. Or, or even if you're not that much into soccer, you'll be like, well, this is a cool thing to 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 be around. But what was it like? You know, I mean, you you, you watched them at the Steinbrenner days. You mm-hmm. watched them, uh, uh, you know, uh, come to Outlang before they even did the improvements that they've done now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, can you explain to somebody or, or just talk about your experience at Outlang and like what what makes it a magical place? Yeah, I mean, like, I went to Al Lang at the beginning of this whole renovation, this whole remodeling of the place. You know, Al yeah. Lang, as we, as we know here, as, as being locals, for people that are going to be watching this around the world, and I'm, wearing, I'm repping a Rowdy's, a Rowdy's hat right now. <laughs> you know, um, Al Lang is a, was a, you know, is that the name after somebody very important in baseball within our community? Right. And then it was a stadium that the actual Tampa Bay Rays used for a while for spring training. And then somehow it was after they left and they went down south, you know what I mean, uh, where sure. they do their spring training. Sure, sure, um, sure. You know, it was a vacant stadium. I consider it like a diamond in the rough. You know what I mean? For honestly, you know, the yeah. Rowdies, they moved over to that stadium. And I remember the first seasons at that stadium, the, the pitch – I'm talking about 2012 when I saw the pitch, which is the field, was yeah. not in uh, the greatest condition. I mean, the scoreboard that they had was like an old rusted scoreboard and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, like it was rough. And I remember hearing a rumor, you know, because I, I, I would speak with people from our supporter section, Ralph's Mob, Skywood Casuals, you know. And, you know, people that knew the in little bit of the ends of the of what was happening, that um, I would always hear that, uh, you know, that, Players from the visiting teams would complain about playing at Al Lang, not because of the view, but because of the field conditions and stuff like that, that the owner of that time, Bill Edwards, decided, hey, I'm going to invest in the stadium. You know, field-wise, he's invested so much money changing the scoreboard, painting the stadium green and gold. I mean, you're right, Eureka, I agree with you. It is a magical place. Like, I remember, like, I know that sitting inside the stadium, I'm sitting behind the goal, which is not a very big stadium, and I'm looking over to my left, you got the boats there, you got the, the palm trees, you know, and then all of a sudden you have the field and the bands and everything. And it's just like, it's vibrant, man. It's, it's, it's so cool. And then once you leave the stadium, if we, and when we win, cause we're winning now, you know, but I've been to where there have been seasons where we would lose more than win, you know, it was rough as well a little bit, but it was cool. Like, going out and going to a bar or, or going to a restaurant and seeing the whole place green and gold. You know I mean? And people will be like, did the Rowdies win or did the Rowdies lose? The Rowdies won, you know what I mean? Or they lost. Like, okay, we'll get them next time, you know? I mean, it's, uh, you know, being that the Rowdies play in second division soccer, people, I have even friends of mine, they ask me, hey, are the Rowdies ever going to go into MLS? And uh, <laughs> my, my response to that, honestly, is that as a fan of soccer in this country, like, I want MLS to do good. But I want the USL to be as good as well, where we can build our own soccer specific stadiums, get into other that we're doing. They're getting into other markets and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, that um, and, yeah. and, and, and have it grow between all the leagues. I don't want to see a league disappear because of financial issues, because of, of issues of like, you know, many different things that can happen. You know what I mean? I, I, I want. I want soccer to, to thrive here. And, you know, I believe that, you know, the Rowdies are doing many things that, like, for, I was, we were talking about Al Lang. They, they got last year a, a training facility down in Tampa here on, on you know, on um, where you know, it's like training now and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's really good. I, I wear my hat, my rowdy stuff all the time. I just went to Publix right over here next to my house. Some guy was like, "Hey, nice jersey." I'm like, "Thanks, man." I mean, like, because I'm wearing the. <laughs> yeah, it was like that at Dynamite too. When we're we're in this, where USF was where they had the TV show, and I mean, you've got, you know, there's like twelve thousand people, eleven thousand people in there, and you know, I'm walking. People go, "Come on, you rowdies," and I'm like, "Let's go," because Shout they're a out. niche thing. Not everyone, not everyone knows them, but uh, those that do, very passionate about. It. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So maybe, yeah. maybe I'll ask you here, like. Me, I'm not a big soccer guy, okay? I, I follow mm-hmm. hockey. I follow football. I've tried to follow yeah. soccer. I try to get into it. Yeah. So maybe for a Tampa fan like myself, 
give me an experience of, you know, walking into the stadium. What are you feeling? You know, what's the emotion? You know, how's the, how's the passion of the fans to maybe draw a fan like me into the stadium and want to go see the Rowdies play? You know, what's that, what's that like that first game day experience? Not now, not that you've been a couple of times, but that very first time you walked in there, you know, what were you feeling? Well, you know, the unique thing about, okay. So when I go to, when I've been to my first game at, at Al Lang specifically, right, Al Lang Stadium. There's a parking garage that's right next to this huge, it says Northern Trust Building. It's a big glass building right across the street from the city. And behind that, there's a parking garage there where I always park, you know, right next to the stadium. It's it's great, great location. When I go that first time or even place, and for your question, when I walk out of that parking garage and head towards the stadium, I hear the drums. So it's like it's like my heart is beating, you know. <laughs> bah, bah. And then all of a sudden, like you know, like I go in, I get my, t- I got my ticket. I could, you know, and then like all of a sudden, you hear the singing. You, I hear the chanting. I hear, I see flags. And then something that's very unique in soccer culture, you know, it's uh, sometimes you see right now within MLS games is like you see like this. It's, it's what we call pyro. And pyro are these little like, it's like smoke bombs that they release a smoke and they give color. You know, I mean, it's nothing more than that. And it's just like it's it it can smell like like it could smell a little a little bit, sure, but sure. It, it like it like wakes you up like whoa, you know, it's like you know, what I mean, and then you got the drum and the singing and everything like that, and it's just like so lively, and it's like. You know, like yourself, Chris, if you've never been to an actual live soccer game and stuff like that, because I, I have peop- I've had people tell me before that if they watch a game on TV and it's 0-0 zero, zero, or it's 1-0, it could possibly be boring because there's not that much scoring into the game. You know what I mean? Like, And they're probably, like, falling, and it's just like – but when you go to that live game, it's, it hooks you up. It really is. It's like it should have a dr- shot of adrenaline, and maybe for a first-time person, just like yourself or somebody that's w- going to be watching this that is, uh, wants to try and, and feel that experience, go into the supporter section. Anybody can go there. Not just because you're such a huge soccer fan that you can, people can only be up to. No, no. Anybody can, and they're more. They're very welcoming. They want you to sing, clap your hands, root for the rowdies, and it's just like non-stop you know they have now at the stadium they've done a modification where they have a standing area where you're just standing you're not sitting it's like you know a safe standing area like right behind the goal and they have a they have a person that's conducting the, the chanting and stuff like that like the songs and stuff. it's just like and if you don't know the songs somebody next to you will help you this is what we're saying you know what i mean and they're very very welcome so i mean it's just like and and it's you know you got good food good drinks good atmosphere i mean like tickets are like you know they can be like 20 bucks for tickets you know what i mean for the you know per ticket and stuff and it's just it's awesome it's yeah. really good yeah well i guess uh man you've given us a lot of insight into kind of your your it's it's real easy to get to catch your passion right that's mm-hmm. why i love you being on our team is that like you mm-hmm. you are like the heart and soul man uh, of, mm-hmm. of 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 our crew to be honest with you man and uh, that's why, well, people might recognize you from your long time uh, being a host on the RBLR Bucks show. So we've yeah. talked a lot about soccer. We, we get that yeah, in and you get to high five each other because we're so high five. But, yep. um, but Chris, I think, would, would want to know uh, how you feel. I, I, you can uh, like maybe overall about the Bucks this season. Mm-hmm. We'll finally get into a little bit of sports talk here. You know, how do you feel? Because look, I know you and I kind of went kind of added about the, the the Tom Brady's leaving era mm-hmm. before he retired and then unretired. And then and I was like trying to get you guys ready to say, dude, once Brady's gone, it's going to yeah. suck. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's still uh, the feeling that I should have or or how are you feeling about this season? Well, like I, I, you know, like even when I was on the Bucks podcast for a while, you know, like I would talk. So, I Tom Brady is the man, and I'm so happy that yeah. he came here. You know what I mean? Like for yeah. real, I really am. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, he is. This is Tom 
Palm Bay. Everyone Tampa, knows. Yep. Tampa Bay. You Tampa know what I mean? Bay. <laughs> Tampa Bay, right? But you know what, man? Like, now that we've gone past that, you know what I mean? We have Baker Mayfield, Kyle Trask. Baker Mayfield is a veteran of the NFL. Okay. You know what I mean? He played in the Cleveland Browns. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. and, uh, you know, and if we're trying – I cannot compare him to Brady. No, no one can. Yeah. No one can. No, no one can. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's going to be interesting. Honestly, it's going to be very interesting. But you know what we have here? We have core players that have stayed with us. You know what I mean? That we have veteran leadership. You have Mike Evans. To right. me, probably one of the greatest or probably the GOAT, you know, in Tampa Bay. And wide receivers, Right. We have Vita Vea. We have, you know, we have so many players coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, it's a Levante David. You know, we have so many people. Devin White. I mean, it's just like. So you think um, you think amazing. we're not going to skip a beat? Or we're, I mean, I guess we'd be bouncing back, uh, making the playoffs or something. Like, do you, I, is that still there? Or or what? what's up? It's. um Like, what's the expectation, it, it, I guess, for this season? Well, the quarterback is the main person that's the one that has to command everything. You know what I mean? Like, he's the one that has to throw the football. He can't lose the football. Like, we have to – we hope that the hands of Baker Mayfield, which we – I, you know, we, we know, I know he's going to start, you know, the game opening week. You know what I mean? I know that. You know, I just want him to be – I just want him to do well. I really do. You know what I mean? My expectations of the – you know, are they making the playoffs? You know what I mean? Like, it's just – Hmm. It's tough. It's really tough. Like, I, I, I know I just, you know, like the, our division is so competitive. It really is. It's not like, you know, we have to be our A game. I'm going to give a prediction right now for our Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I say, honestly, that I believe that we will make the playoffs. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay I believe we'll make the, I believe we'll make the playoffs. <clears throat> And because, you know, you know, when you have guys like Mike Evans and like, you know, like, you know, just like, you know, we have, you know, core players. And it's just like people think like Mike Evans was leaving, but he's not. He was, you know, he's not. He's not leaving. He, he's he's a buck through and through. He's going to retire a buccaneer. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, he's going to have his statue in one buck. You know I mean? That's what he is. You know? <laughs> For real. He's going to have his name up in the ring of honor. Brady's going to go up next year in the ring of honor. That's what I believe. You know what I mean, but um, but yeah, man, I believe that we're gonna be first place in the in the, in the NFC South. Taking first place, okay. So mm-hmm. I'll ask you here really quickly because I want to get everyone's opinion on this. Mm. Yeah. Are you Mayfield? Are you Trask? Are you undecided? Or are you whoever gets us W's? Uh, you know, and and when I was on the Bucks, I would always talk about trash, and and Eureka knows about it. You know what I mean? He knows <laughs> because honestly, and I would always say this all the time, and I will say it again: you have to give the guy, you have to give the guy a chance. Okay, to, out there on a regular season game to prove himself, because we cannot, he cannot prove himself from the Sasha. and obviously he was never going to take the job from Tom Brady. But now that he has that experience from Brady. You know what I mean? From seeing him pr- practice, he he should be given a chance. You know what I'm saying? He should. Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either the first game of the season, or 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 have him behind B- Baker Mayfield. But I want him to see. I want to see him play. I want to see what he has. I really do. You know, like why would we? Why would we spend on a, on a draft pick like so high on him and, and not use? What's um? How do you how? What would you do? You know, you got the you only have three preseason games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So, do you split them down the middle for the first two of them, or like what? Like, does does who starts the first half? Do you switch them up every quarter? Do you switch them up every half? Like, because you want to see both of them with the ones. Mm-hmm. Like, of course. Of course. You know, I, I don't know. Like, what's what's how? What's the best way to do that? I would put Baker Mayfield first two quarters and the last okay. two quarters put Trask. Well, I guess how much how much time because like you said, you, you gotta give Trask a shot. And I and I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Because you gotta you mm-hmm. gotta see if he's improved or anything over these couple of years. So yeah. 
you know, do you give them a 50 50 shot right off the bat? Is it, I mean, is it a true competition right now? Yeah. Like yeah. I believe, I believe it's true. Even though Baker Mayfield always is much more experienced as a starting quarterback, but mm -hmm. I want, I want to see, I want him to play two halves, two quarters, third quarter, fourth quarter. I really okay. do. Okay. And I mean, because I want to see him feel that pressure. I want him yeah. to do that. You know what I mean? Because, because then we can get an idea of, his decision making skills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because obviously you just get 15 minutes for one quarter. That's it. And you know, but I want him to play too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think and, yo, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Oh no, sorry. Um, and then like, you know, let's say he plays the first game of the preseason, like the, the third, fourth, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? And then obviously, you know, we gotta see what the coach says, man. You know what I mean? Ty yeah. Bowles, we gotta see him what he sees. So does he see him like, hey, let's put him for the next full game? I don't know. You know what I mean? For the next, the second game. And then, and then maybe have Baker Mayfield play the last game. You know what I mean? What would be, what would be success in your eyes for Trask? Cause I mean, you, you are a big Trask guy. So like what would yeah. be successful enough for you to go like, okay, he's the man let's, you know, cause well, do you, do you think Baker's the number one right now? Do you think Trask is number two trying to fight to number one? Is it a 50, is it who knows right now? Or are they going to flip flop? Like, like, well, that's what kind of where I want to get with that. I believe Baker Manfield's number one. Okay. Because of his experience. Okay. That's it. But, you know, I mean, like, you know, because Trask hasn't played a, an actual snap in a regular season game. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, what, what Kyle Trask comes. Preseason then. I, I would have to see him. I honestly would have to see him throw, uh, you know, have better, you know, when he's being rushed. Have a, have good enough uh, not not to freak out, you know, trying to throw the ball away and stuff like that. I want to have okay. composure and stuff like that. If he has to run out and make smart decisions, throwing it to Brady, throwing it to Godwin, you know, I mean, I'm not Brady. I mean, throwing it to Mike Evans, throwing it to Godwin and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I want to see him throw it to our tight ends. Like, it's yeah. um, you know, it's just it's just decision making because the quarterback is the is the the main guy. You know, I mean? yeah. he's the main player. You know, because like, to. To answer your question, Chris, like I kind of said this on the last show too, but it's like I think they brought Baker in uh, for two reasons. One, to be a kind of a lighting the fire moment to Trask to say, we're not just going to hand this to you, dude. Just because you're mm -hmm. here and you sat here with a clipboard and we drafted you as high as we did, we're not just going to hand you the keys. You have to earn it. So here's a guy that we think is – you know, uh, uh, we're buying low on this guy that maybe has a high ceiling that he still needs to unlock. And basically it's like, well, if Trask like gets his fire lit and comes back and beats Baker Mayfield, you know, you didn't beat a superstar quarterback, but you beat a guy mm -hmm. who's been a starter in the league. You know, yeah. so you, you moved up the ladder a little bit and, and we'll see what goes from there. If you're not good, at, but on the conversely, if you're not good enough to beat Baker Mayfield, then you shouldn't be the quarterback of a starting NFL team. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and vice versa, you bring in Baker and you say, you have a shot. You have a clear path. If Baker Mayfield comes in and from day one establishes himself as a leader, establishes himself as a, this is, this is stable ground that he's under, you know, they're not just going to give Trask the spot. They're going to tell Baker it's yours to lose. Mm -hmm. In my mind, in my mind. And you say, here you go, buddy. Like, and, and from that, that's, I think where we're starting is Baker's mm -hmm. one, Trask is two. And if Baker slips and falls, well, then we got a guy that we're going to throw in there. And at worst case, they both suck and we have a high draft pick. Or maybe one of the two uh, gets that, get that, that opportunity that they've been waiting for mm -hmm. and they seize it. So it's like, mm -hmm. it could be a win-win. It could be a lose-lose, but Either way, it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Chris, did you have anything else before we get into our uh, our kind of the rest of the lounge? Because, man, it's been it's been a really good half hour learning about Santiago and his passion and love for, for the sports, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. I, you know what? I, I enjoyed his answer of uh, entering the stadium for the first time because I felt like I was there. I felt the vibe. I felt the, <laughs> the passion from the Rowdies. What do you call them? Ralph's Mob, right? That's what you guys yeah, call them, Yeah, right? Ralph's so, Mob supporters group, you know? Yeah, like, I think he did a really good job explaining that. So for me, from a fan who's never been out there to a game, I, I think it sounds yeah. like it would be really fun to, to go out to one. So yeah. I think it was a good time. 
Yeah, and, and one thing, last thing, one thing I want to say about that, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I, I grew up watching soccer on TV. My father's Cuban, my mom's Colombian, and, uh, you know, like, my dad was a soccer referee. We, we would... I would go to him with local soccer games, even started going to the first ever MLS games up at Giant Stadium up there. So I was always into soccer, you know what I mean? But I remember like going down here and, you know, going to high school, I would wear soccer jerseys and stuff like that. And even sometimes my classmates would tell me like, you know, they're like, hey, soccer is a is a girly sport. You know what I mean? And I'm being very honest with you, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and yeah. because of the fact that, you know, like, oh, you got American football. And I'm like, and I comp- I get it, American football. We love the sport, NFL, college football, you know what I mean? But it's the fact that we didn't have, when I was going to high school, we didn't have, like, I can't show, I couldn't show them, like, a clip from YouTube. We're like, here, check this out. Maybe you'll <laughs> like this. Or, or, or take them to a game, you know what I mean? But now it's a little bit different, you know what I mean? Like, soccer is growing rapidly here where anybody in any city, a lot in any of the cities, like, you want to go to a first-time pro soccer game? Go support your local team, you know, whether it's the Rowdies, whether it's a team in MLS, whether it's another USL team, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, Charleston Battery or like, you know, Birmingham yeah. Legion or Phoenix Rising. And those are teams in the USL. USL means United Soccer League, which yeah. just to let everybody know our the league headquarters are here in Tampa, right across the street from, from International Plaza. Right there, uh, there's a big glass building. Um, so, I mean... It's uh, but you know, like it, it it changes, and you know, you'll see a tackle. You're like, oh wow, that tackle looked more brutal than when I saw it on TV. Oh my, look at that! He just he just fell. He's like, he's really in pain. You know what I mean? Like, but but um, you know, uh, but yeah, you should go out to a game, man. We we'll go out together as an RBOR crew, yeah, man, and go support the rallies. Oh, we're going to get that. Put together yes. at some point. Let's do it. Let's uh, well, do dude, it. Santiago, you don't have to leave, buddy. You can stick nope. around. We're going to get to the second half of the sports lounge. Let's and that starts us off with our bet of the week with our very own Chris Glazier. Chris, uh, you're one and oh, buddy. You're you're one and oh after last week. week. <laughs> Starting uh, no, it of course, off right. <laughs> I do say, you know, don't don't follow what we say here. You're gonna lose all your sure. money. But hey, you're one and oh, so you're 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 in the you're in the black here. What do you got for us this week? What are we what are we betting on? Well, since like I said, we still don't have, you know, parlays in Hard Rock app yet here in Florida. I'm um, still riding with prize picks. Like I said, DFS app, you know, whatever you guys play on, I, I prefer prize picks myself. Okay. Uh, today I got Steven Matz under six K's in his last 25. He's only gone over twice at home. Okay. So he's pushed three times at six. He's only gone over six two times in 25 games. So I like the odds there. Uh, Colorado, they're on the road. You know, that, that's probably what worries me the most. They've struck out a little bit as of late, but I'm going to ride the, the under here with just the way he's he's been pitching lately. I mean, if he's only gone over twice in the past 25, the odds are in our favor. He goes under. He might even push at six. Maybe that's why his line is a little bit high because they are pitching against Colorado. So that's my bet of the day. Take it if you want it. If you don't want it, don't take it. <laughs> uh man yeah we gotta get we gotta get hard rock back on back on top man because uh it's nothing better than that it, well it's so it's like for instance you know here we are in tampa bay who cares about the cardinals and the rockies but hey you know you see a good bet like that maybe you make a couple bucks it's fun maybe you're gonna watch that uh that game a little more closely than you would <laughs> um well with all that said i think it's time for our next thing which is going to be worthless sports card breaks uh this is a a cool little thing that uh i'm gonna try to to get into uh every single week where we're gonna we're gonna open some sports cards and in honor in honor of our guest santiago pombo in honor Mm -hmm. of the fact that you had the rblr crew dead center at uh two television shows this week for Mm -hmm. all of the wrestling we are gonna open the second uh the second series this is a, a, a little uh, uh, nice little box there. Uh, we got eight packs, eight packs of cards for all Elite Wrestling by none other than Upper Deck. So okay. look, guy, look, dude, we're, wrestling is mainstream now, buddy. We're, yes. We got Upper Deck cards, buddy. So yep, exactly. I don't know if you guys collected the first set. I, I'm, I'm in the process of collecting the whole set of the first mm-hmm. first where it's like Jungle Boy's rookie card and Britt okay. Baker's rookie card and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, but but right here on the box, 
let's take a look. We got CM Punk. He actually wasn't in the last year's set. He was okay. kind of, I mean, he was an extra card that they had put on as a, uh, you had to buy it separately. Um, mm -hmm. But you got Jade Cargill. You got uh, Thunder Rosa, Darby Allen, yeah, Hangman. Face, that's Page. Face uh, Jack Perry on there. That's yeah, Face, face Jack Jungle Perry. Boy Jack Perry. He's a little different nowadays. Yeah, he is, yeah. Um, yep. But, you know, there's a lot of cool um, variants, and uh, that's kind of what we're looking for today is, one, I just kind of want to open up all these cards to look at the photography, and we got to see them up close at Dynamite. But, you know, these pictures live forever. So, I mean, imagine you're a kid and, you, you saw AEW, and now you get to collect these wrestling cards. Um, for the collectors out there, though, we are looking for the first time in the line. I guess you'd call them a rookie card for, for wrestling. But also the, the numbered parallels or the color parallels or the autograph parallels, right? Um, so let's see. So I am very bad at opening these little wax packs. So we'll see if I can get this other side. Of course, the pressure's on me too because I'm doing this live, and I didn't <laughs> practice. I didn't get my like, I didn't get my warm up packs in. I'm really, really oh. sucking here on the first one. There it is. Well, because the the problem is you don't want to damage the cards. Because exactly. say we get something really, That's really, good. really nice, right? Say mm -hmm. we get something really nice. Yep. I don't want to damage the corners. I don't want to exactly. screw all that up, right? Yep. Very Go first through. card. Sting. It's Okay. Sting! Sting! Look at that with that <laughs> snow coming down. It's the stinger, baby. Here's Britt Baker applying the the lockjaw onto. Is that is that Julia Hart? It is Julia. Tell. It's 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 uh when she was in her her cheerleader. Game. Oh yeah, the varsity oh. blonde stuff. Here's oh. Nyla Rose. In a gold, we saw parallel. her. We saw her in action on Wednesday, actually. So this isn't this isn't numbered, but it is a gold parallel. So the normal cards will have this silver uh, around it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about the 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 design? It's kind of a, it's kind of like a, I don't know if it's like like a canvas kind of thing with paint around it, or there's just kind of dots, but. Um, kind of clean. You can see the, the the name pretty clearly at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. The AEW logo at the top. On the back, it looks like it's the same picture. Like it's they took her face, mm -hmm. and they have a little a little uh, height, weight, born, and what is Nyla Rose took her first victory over arch rival Hikaru Shida in November 2021 and advanced to the semifinal round. Uh, but that's not the picture they took. Here's an insert. Oh, check this out. This is our first insert card. UD Canvas for Miro. And now you can see on the little bit of glare here, but this is a kind of a kind of a art canvasy texture to it. Yeah. And so that's a very dude, nice card. Dude, this is cool as hell, man. <laughs> Miro. Uh Santiago, how'd you feel about Miro's uh, appearance so far in AEW coming over from WWE? You know, he hasn't, you know. You know, he's always a mid card guy when he was in WWE. I mean, he had you know, you know, he had that one big match with John Cena at WrestleMania. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Other than that, like you know, I thought maybe he would have had possibly a title run. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, an AEW, but yeah. It, it well, he won the TNT. Happened. He's been the TNT champion for a while. Yeah, yeah, but you know, that's you know, the TNT championship, the TBS championship. Those are you're not Those are them. very. They're not high. On <laughs> yeah, you're honestly, not high. On I honestly thought maybe he would have had something because yeah. of a name coming from from a recognized, you know, the juggernaut, pretty much right. of rest of pro wrestling. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, sports entertainment, however you know. Yep. But um, honestly, thought he would be he would be better be better. Uh, well, be well better. here's a dude. Here's a dude that's currently holding the TNT championship, but he does he didn't earn it. He didn't win it. That's Christian Tampa's own. Tampa zone Christian Cage, who he came out, he came out in a promo. I don't even know if this made TV. Uh, I haven't actually watched the TV product yet, but he came out beforehand and and 
And he goes, you know, the Lightning lost in the first round. The Bucks like don't have Tom Brady and uh, uh, the uh, yeah. And, and the Rays are gonna choke it. So he says, "I'm the only champ in Champa Bay." While he's he holding did. up the tea, it's so it was so good. Um, but this is a different. This is a different uh, insert main features. Uh, just a cool, just a different little, uh, you know, these little dots in the background. I, I don't know. I, I, unless it's a really cool picture, I don't really dig those cards. Mm -hmm. um, tag team of the Lucha Brothers, one of my favorites. I think these dudes rock. Yeah. Um, Jay Lethal. Uh, Chris, what do you, how's your Jay Lethal uh, experience been? I don't know if you watched TNA back in the day, right? Yeah, I mean, I think he's doing. I think he's doing his job right now. It's to put a lot of the younger guys over. His role yeah. is kind of just. He he's not going for a title. He's not. He's there to help out the younger talent. I think and put him over like he should be doing. He's, yeah, he's had some solid matches though. He's won a couple matches. He's been in a lot of tags. You know, them and Jarrett. So. Speaking of tags, here's Santana. Yeah. Who there's rumors mm -hmm. that, that uh, Santana and Ortiz maybe mended fences. Maybe they'll be back together. Here's 2.0 from the Daddy JAS. Magic. Dude, mm -hmm. they're they're very good at being annoying. Um, mm -hmm. Here's Luchasaurus, the actual TNT mm -hmm. champion here. Yep. Um, here's an Arn Anderson manager card. Mm -hmm. And this isn't numbered or anything, but it is a gold parallel because here it is. Here's a green numbered to 399 of announcer Jim Ross. Good old JR. So this is Good old definitely the best card we've pulled today. Yep. Uh, we'll put that off to the side. We are going to, that's going to be a, I'm going to have to put that in a sleeve and keep that in the personal collection there. For sure. Um, mm -hmm. Here's outside, but so outside the <laughs> ring, Mark Henry. Um, this goes, Mark Henry shows he has a giant sized heart as they volunteer their time in the Pittsburgh area ahead of the inaugural edition of Rampage. Well, that's cool. Kind yeah. of shows. That's just some things. Uh, Johnny John, Hungy. Johnny Hungy, buddy. And I believe this is the rookie is. card. This yeah. is the rookie card of Max Caster, <laughs> yep. who maybe mm -hmm. has a pretty long career ahead of him. Um, mm -hmm. that. that might be something special down the road. Well, here, you know what? I'm actually going to. You never know. That old, that's the old, old, old Max with those old. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That was probably uh, him on Dark. Might have been on Dark. Dude, what a gimmick. What a gimmick that is, man. Those are two dudes that I had nothing for, and they stuck them together. And then who knew that having Billy Gunn would be one of the things that really, like, took off? Takes off, dude. It's Wrestling is amazing that way, man. Yeah, it's um, it's a very – it's a – you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, you know – Pro wrestling is uh, is Orange thriving Pat. now more than ever. You know, it really hey, is. There's, there's there Billy is. Gunn right there. Here's Wardlow Gold Edition. <clears throat> or dog. Yep. Main features Chris Jericho. Debut dates. Here we go. So uh, Brian Danielson was another person that was not in the other set. Uh, he mm -hmm. was an extra card you you could get. I mean, officially he's in the set, but you couldn't get it in a pack of cards. Um, debut dates nine five twenty one. There, so uh, Santiago. Here's a dude that came over, huge name from WWE, uh, and they immediately threw him into the. I mean, he hasn't been for the title. Uh, he hasn't won the title, but he has wrestled yeah. four times. Yep. What's a guy like uh, Brian Danielson hmm. do for AW? He's a big name, man. I mean, he has he, obviously we already know, we know him as wrestling fans when he was in WWE as with the Yes Movement, winning WrestleMania thirties main event. Yeah, you know um, that was huge. And then, like when he came over, I remember when he came over that first ever appearance that he came over, and uh, Kenny Omega cut that promo, and he was like, "I leave you guys. I know I will leave you guys happy or something like that." <clears throat> and then, and then took him, you know, and then he, you hear that, ba -da -ba -bum, bum, ba -da -ba -bum, bum, ba -da -ba -bum, and then they put like a little twist to it, you know, like at the end, he comes out, and the crowd went insane you know? I, be I believe they call this the pyro because there's like i'm trying to get it on camera there's like yeah. a firework top right this corner, is a, yeah. not numbered but it is a parallel for scorpio sky mm -hmm. um, it's better obviously you got hurt again kind of combining this we're gonna come kind of combine this with our our, our pro wrestling talk because we only have about 10 15 minutes left um 
Big Wembley Stadium show, Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just got our main event, MJF versus Adam Cole, baby. Uh, what? How does that go? What are you excited for on that? Man, uh, you know, most of all, honestly, I'm happy for Cole. He's been through a lot, man. I mean, his neck injury, all that. His, it was serious, man. Like, he was, yeah. you know, and I think NEXT, like you said, he had some of his best matches there. And he's really... He's really come far, man. He's developed a lot. You know, I think Tony Khan really likes him. This storyline. FTR. Been, FTR. Mm-hmm. Shout out to FTR. The storyline's been amazing. Uh, I think. I think. I think this is the right main event to have on, on the biggest stage. I think. Candace I think. You're, I think there's going to be a lot of shit going on in the end of it that a lot yeah. of fuckery is going to happen in the end of that match. <laughs> hey-o, <laughs> hey-o, French, hey-o. But, uh, it's, I gotta it's, mark that. Yeah, yeah it's, going, it's going down. It's going down in that match. Uh, I think it's gonna be good. I, hey, it's I expect, my cousin Cash Wheeler. Yeah, <laughs> I expect some kind of a some kind of a. I don't know. Maybe a maybe a Adam Cole goes heel, or they keep riding this out, and Punk goes heel. Maybe Punk yeah. comes out, interferes in the match, something along those lines. Yeah, you know, uh, this this card's been a lot of injuries. Unfortunately, have kind of messed up what I think they would have done. Um, in a couple different matches, but in, who knows? Uh, Santiago, are you paying attention in AEW? Do, what, what do you? Because I mean, dude, this Wembley show is going to be. It could be the largest wrestling event ever. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wembley Stadium. This is the new Wembley Stadium. You know, the new one because there used to be an old one, but this is obviously the new Wembley Stadium. And um, Chuck, you right, right after him. It's a, it's a big, it's, it's the biggest stadium in, in the UK, man, in, 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 in England. It's the biggest stadium in size in, in England. So it's like, Evil you know, we, we, we know that WWE, comparing to WWE, for example, we know WWE fills it up, you know, like they've filled up the AT&T Stadium and everything like that, you know. But this is honestly, for me, AEW's first huge, huge stadium. Yeah. You know I mean, oh, you know, oh, big, yeah, big definitely. stadium. You know, on yeah, um, this type of a production, so there's going to be nervousness, yes. But is there going to be that adrenaline and electricity and stuff like that? Like, you know, I mean, you know that uh, I, I, you know, for example, Forbidden Door. I love oh, boy, the the no fact Christ. that the mix of New Japan Pro Wrestling and yeah. you know and AEW, and it's just like that it's they get to hater. showcase. You know, I mean, like the talent from New Japan because. It's unbelievable how the wrestling community has, you know, it's just these 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 are past live awesome shows, man. It's the wrestling matches are unbelievable from Kenny Omega Andy to Bone. Will Ospreay and uh, you know, it's just like Brian Danielson, he's getting, you know, he was told WWE because of his concussions that he couldn't wrestle because of this and that and he and he had treatment done he he wanted to wrestle still. Okay. He went to AEW and now he's getting the shot of of you know, you know, blowing you know, blowing the roof off the place. You know, what I mean, it's just Man. it's gonna be unbelievable. And hopefully, and Adam Cole. You know, I I remember seeing Adam Cole here. You know, a buddy of mine. I have a good friend of mine who loves pro wrestling, yep. and he told me that NXT has these local shows. Yeah, you know, in these yeah. small venues here in Tampa. Yeah, the Largo Loop. And I, Largo, and then one they have in Tampa by USF University yep. of South Florida. And yep. I've been to both buildings, right? And I remember seeing Adam Cole like right in front of me. And when he would go like, he would do his, you know, and then he would go like, Adam, yep. Adam Cole, baby. And everybody does it. I'm like, whoa, that was. And then I was going to be doing it in a big stadium like Wembley. It just gives like goosebumps, you know? Yeah. It really does. So it's exciting. Um, uh, I guess uh, last last thing I'll ask you about Santiago is is there mm-hmm. is there someone in AEW that you've been that you've looked at maybe a guy that wasn't in WWE before a brand new dude that you've been looking at mm-hmm. and being like you know what man I knew nothing about this guy but or girl uh, mm-hmm. but but they're they're a star yeah you know I'm from I honestly uh, to be honest with you. One of the um, one of the main hold on, guys. Hold, on, hold, on, that hold, on, I, hold that thought. Hold that thought, boss man. We got our we got our first relic. We didn't yeah. get an autograph, but we did get a relic. Okay, this is number to fifty. Yes, this is number twenty six out of fifty. Wow, twenty six is like my lucky number, so it's kind of funny that this happened. Twenty six, only fifty of these are on the planet, and I'm holding one in my hand. This is Whoa. a Miro relic. Uh, Whoa, like a T-shirt or something. Let's see. Congratulations, 
you have received a trading card with Miro memorabilia that has been certified to have been worn by the featured. So this isn't just like a t-shirt they cut up. This Miro wore this. We hope that you enjoy this piece of wrestling history. Nice. Look at that, buddy. That is awesome. Nice. That is awesome. Wow. There's... Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, I'll, I'll do the last cards and then we'll finish that thought here. Here's outside the ring with best friends. Oh, just talking about. Oh, that's. Oh, because they. This is Sue's minivan that got. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Graffiti. They got graffiti and stuff. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So they're doing that. And then the last card is Boom Boom Colt Cabana. Yeah. So we'll we'll do over the hall here, but uh finish your thoughts, Santiago. Sorry, buddy. Who, who's someone? No, that's okay. It, from the beginning of AEW, you know what I mean? Like the one who's yeah. blown me away is MJF. Oh, dude. Yes. You know, you know, like I know, I know because he even told his story, like he went to um WWE de developmental. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, didn't work out. And, uh, you know, he's just blowing up, man. Like his, his promos, it's just like the guy is, he gets under people's skin. And if, when you see that, it's just like, whoa. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, whew. yeah. And then obviously, like, you know, um, like talent like Darby Allen, for example, you know, even, even Jack Perry, you know, when I, I, I was born 1984, right? Mm -hmm. I remember in 19, in the early nineties, there was a famous show on TV called Beverly Hills, 90210. <laughs> and guess yeah. what? Whoever grew up around that area knew of Luke Perry. Yeah, buddy. You know? Yeah. And everybody knew of him because he was such a big, and then to, obviously when Jack Perry goes, and he goes as Jungle Boy and everything. And then you see the path, you know, like Luke Perry, before he passed away, he loved professional wrestling. And, yeah. then, and then his son went into it and everything like that. Well, now he's a bad guy. Now, now he's, he's a, bad a bad guy. guy. He's a heel, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then obviously, like, I saw the documentary of the David Arquette. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, man, it's just that that's really cool, too, you know what I mean, that he's doing it. and. Obviously, you got to have some veterans there like Chris Jericho. You know, many people are calling him the GOAT because of how long he's done it at such a high level, you know what I mean, yeah. with winning world titles and this and that and this, like, you know, in, in many different organizations, you know, that he's been in, you know, whether it's, you know, not, he didn't become a world champion at WCW, of course, because but he went WWE or WWF at the time, then WWE, then New Japan, now he's AEW, like, yeah. you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, man. Pro wrestling is unbelievable. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Chris, uh, final words on our pro wrestling talk before we we wrap it up and get the hell out of here, buddy. What a uh, show on Wednesday. Man, sh shout out to AEW. Uh, man, that's our, what, fourth live event, right? Two in Orlando, yep. one in Jacksonville, and now we've finally gone to Tampa. And it's every show we've gone to has been great, man. They put on a great show, man. It's the environment. It, it just feels so so attitude era to me man and i love that because that's what i grew up on the attitude era and the, the 90s of wrestling mm -hmm. and even the early 2000s before it got this pg stuff like aew is just a really good promotion if you're if you're into the older stuff like i was in the 90s turn two nine to aew man give it a shot watch it on wednesday even shout out to collision collision's been great uh they put on some great shows that it's been on it's they got three programs now wednesday friday saturday so overall man great product so far you know covid I think COVID injuries uh, hurt them a little bit a couple of years ago with storylines and this and that. But now, now we're really getting to see what they can do with their talent they have. And MJF's phenomenal. This Cole storyline's been great. Yep. You know, it's 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 all well, just really good stuff right now. And they just wrapped up their. Uh, they've been they've been re-signing gigantic names in their company, yep. which yep. to me is a canary in the coal mine, kind of telling everybody that they have secured. Their future, they have secured their television deal for a very long time, and they are turning that money immediately into their Wembley Stadium investments and the elite, the young bucks. The it, I, And it would very much surprise me if MJF is actually a free agent. I, I, he's probably already been wrapped up as well, but, but who probably. knows? That, maybe that's yeah. wishful thinking, but yeah. uh, may, they'll at least have the money to throw around. And, you know, maybe they preemptively struck – 
with MJF before there's a bidding war of 2024. Buddy, what what a great show. Uh, to the sports lounge. We really, Thank you really guys. appreciate this. Um, Chris, buddy, my partner is always in the man. All right. Yeah. Well, for everyone, we are the Sports Lounge. We are on RBLR. You can follow us at RBLR Sports on all forms of social media. And until then, we'll see you, boys. Peace. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.